Wind and pelting rain blew palm trees horizontal. Boats were left tangled in the port as cars were nearly submerged. So this article focuses on social capital, which means that the social networks that we build can actually influence our economic relationships. So one established way of measuring social capital is social trust. So previous studies have found that there's higher levels of trust in countries that have significant disaster events like storms. So other findings have shown that higher income inequality in a country can actually result in more deaths from a natural disaster. They've also found that decentralized governments are more effective at addressing a natural disaster event. So what all this research means is that better economic development for everybody, as well as better institutions, can result in a better handling of natural disasters. From 1985 to 2004, the disaster studied included floods, storms, earthquakes, slides, and volcanic activity. But how do these disasters play out in various countries? Well, for one, they found that these disasters were a lot worse in developing countries. But why is this? In analyzing all these disasters, it's been found that storms lead to more trust. And this is because it affects all people, regardless of social class. In comparison, floods lead to lower trust. And this is because it affects people who live in flood zones, who tend to be lower income populations. So the reason why storms result in more trust than flooding is because we see storms coming. So what that means is that it allows time for social trust and social capital to be built up. So this same thing cannot happen with floods and earthquakes because those disasters are sudden. Because remember, this study focused on social capital. The study also found that smaller countries, as well as countries with more freedoms, tended to have increased social trust because of natural disasters. A reason for this might be because in smaller countries, more people probably experienced that disaster opposed to large countries where probably a small population experienced it at all. The reason why this study was so important is because as we experience global warming and climate change, it's important to consider how these events are affecting society. Other research has shown that natural disasters might even increase violence. But what's clear is that natural disasters just offer an opportunity for both positive and negative outcomes. But in this research, it showed that natural disasters in the right conditions can actually make us all come together much more than we would otherwise. So when thinking about the strengths and weaknesses of the article, I definitely appreciated that they took into account the fact that lower income countries and more developed countries, that when they experience the same exact type of event, that lower income countries are going to experience even more death statistically. Another thing was in terms of the weaknesses, and thinking about the survey question that was asked and the respondent had to choose between yes most people can be trusted or no you can't be too careful so i feel like that is just a very vague question that's just put out there and we're supposed to gather how much trust is within a certain culture dependent on one survey question but then again this is probably the best way that they know how mm -hmm. to gather as much uh, data as they can from such a large population and so we have to keep that in mind as well. Definitely. So, and another thing that they mentioned was that cross-culturally, as awkwardly as it is worded, it was one of the ones that cross-culturally was most understood, so. Yeah. Yeah. So overall, that was really interesting in that just seeing how our behaviors can be changed by the types of uh, disasters that we encounter is really fascinating and has a lot of implications. So thank you so much for watching and uh, we'll catch you in the next video. See ya.